Welcome. In this session, we're going to speak about the health of adolescents. By the time you finish this session, you should be able to define adolescence and speak about the special importance of adolescent health. Note the leading burdens of disease among adolescents. Comment on the risk factors for those burdens and identify measures that can be taken to address some of the key burdens of adolescent health. Let's begin by defining adolescence. Yafet, what is an adolescent? An adolescent is someone who is between ages 10 and 19 That's years right, old. and everybody should understand that the data on adolescence is not very good. Uh, sometimes people have data 10 to 19. Some, some organizations have data that's 10 to 24. Some have 10 to 14 and 15 to 19, which is really also helpful, as you'll see. But you have to understand um, there isn't easily available, uh, always consistent data about 10 to 19 year olds. And often that data is mixed with data for 20 to 24 year olds who are more generally referred to as, as young adults. Now let's ask Rachel, why, why is it so important that we focus particular attention on the health of adolescents? Well, there are a lot of reasons to focus on adolescent health. One, there are a large number of adolescents globally, especially in the developing world, and they face a health burden that's unique. Also, without protecting the health of adolescents, a lot of the progress that's been made in improving child health is lost, and adolescent health also lays the groundwork for healthy and productive lives as adults. Very, very beautifully said. I, I am absolutely certain I couldn't say that <laughs> so well myself. Let's explore adolescent health uh, briefly through a few vignettes that illustrate some of the special features of adolescence and why it's so important to focus attention on them. David is a 17-year-old boy in Manila, the capital of the Philippines. He's in his last year of secondary school. David's a typical adolescent male. and He's regularly being exposed to the risks of tobacco, alcohol, substance abuse, and unsafe sex. Soon, he's going to add another risk when he learns to drive. David's family knows he's a good boy, but they're constantly worried about David's ability to manage adolescence in a healthy way. Graciela is a 16-year-old girl in San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador. She's constantly being exposed to the risks of adolescence as well. There's so-called junk food all around her, and an increasing number of her peers are overweight and obese. Some of her peers have also started to smoke tobacco. Others are also beginning to engage in sexual relations with young men in the community, often unprotected. Social and economic pressures have also caused many of her young female friends to feel unhappy, uh, and often unhappy to the point where they can't fully function. We also have to ask if Graciela will be able to come out of adolescence as a healthy young adult. With these vignettes in mind, let's look at the 10 leading causes of adolescent death uh, by sex for 2012. And here what we'll see, and remember this is 10 to 19, and we, were, we later are going to break this down into 10 to 14-year-olds and 15 and 19-year-olds. Here what we see is road injury as the leading cause of death among adolescents globally. What you see in red, not unanticipated, is males. And what you see in the, uh, in the blue is uh, females. We also see HIV AIDS as very, very important, usually for upper adolescents, as we'll see. We must never never underestimate the importance of self-harm as a cause of death for adolescents. We still see pneumonia, lower respiratory infection, interpersonal violence, which is more important in some regions as others, as I'm going to comment on, injuries like drowning that occur primarily among the younger group rather than among the older group. So it's really critical if one is to think about the health of adolescents and how it is that their health can be improved, of course, that we think about what it is that adolescents are getting sick, disabled, and dying from. So let's look now 
at what this would be like if we looked at their health in terms of disability adjusted life years rather than in terms of deaths. And here we see a pattern that's somewhat different and also why it's so valuable to think beyond deaths and to also consider what it is that they're getting sick and uh, disabled by. Here what we see, uh, and also something that's extraordinarily important, is that the leading cause of disability adjusted life years among adolescents of both sexes in 2012, I mean among adolescents total, uh, for both sexes in total, is actually uni unipolar depressive disorder. Uh, in fact, mental disorders are even more important than that because we also see as the eighth leading cause of disability adjusted life, life years, anxiety disorders. Now in addition, beyond what we saw in the last graphic on deaths, we see the uh, exceptional importance of iron deficiency anemia. And we also begin to see, even for relatively young people, musculoskeletal disorders as well. So there are a number of takeaways from this, but one that I'd really like to uh, encourage you to keep in mind is the truly exceptional importance of mental health issues related to adolescence. And in here, it's unipolar depressive disorder, self-harm, I should also have said, and uh, anxiety disorders. Now, we would also expect, of course, uh, for these conditions to vary by age group and by sex within those age groups as well. And, uh, and in fact, we see that they, that they do. Uh, road traffic injuries are always more important always, I think we could say, more important for males than they are for females. And yet here what we see for uh, females is the uh, exceptional importance of HIV AIDS, which we're also going to talk, uh, talk further about. Here what we see, given that these are low and middle income countries, is in the younger group we continue to see some causes that are communicable, lower respiratory infections and diarrheal disease and malaria. As, uh, as uh, children get older, we, continue, we still see malaria, but we see less communicable disease. They're, they're older, hopefully they're stronger, hopefully they're, they're thriving better, hopefully they're, they're better uh, nourished as well. But as kids get children, get older, what we see is uh, they face the risks now increasingly of road traffic injury, of uh, interpersonal violence, and of uh, self-harm, which for females, 15 to 19 in low and middle income countries in this year was actually the leading cause of death, okay? Here in this graphic, what we're going to look at is the leading causes of disability adjusted life years globally by age group in 2010. The slide is divided into four different age groups. Five to nine children, young adolescents, upper adolescents, and young adults. There's a lot on this slide, so I'm just going to comment on a few things. Among the younger group, you would expect to see um, continuing deaths from uh, and disability adjusted life years due to some communicable diseases, as well as the beginning of uh, dallies and deaths that relate to exposure to accidents and injuries. And in fact, that's what we see. As we move along the life course, and as children go from 5 to 9 toward 15 to 19 and 20 to 24, what we see is a larger share of the total dallies that are um, attributable to mental health disorders, uh, to HIV AIDS, as well as to road traffic uh, injuries and interpersonal violence. And it's really important, again, if one wants to enhance the health of adolescents to break adolescents down into different age groups, identify the causes of dis disability adjusted life years and deaths in those age groups, the risk factors uh, that uh, relate to them, and then begin to decide what are the most appropriate cost-effective measures that can be taken, hopefully in doable and sustainable ways, to help enable better health among uh, adolescents. Now. Um, as we consider the burden of disease among adolescents, 
it's important to elaborate on a number of the specific issues that came up in the last, um, in the last graphic, uh, and even in the ones before that. And I'm going to comment just briefly on them, but I encourage all of you to explore further on your own these really important issues and how they relate to adolescent health. Uh, early pregnancy and childbirth are really fundamental to adolescent health. I'm sure everyone understands that um, the maternal deaths, um, that women are at greatest risk of a maternal death at very young ages or at relatively older ages as well. And we're living in a world in which about 11% of all births occur among adolescents. And by the time women are 18, about 20% of all women by the time they're 18 have actually given birth. And many of these are women who have not been particularly well nourished, who are not particularly well educated, who may not have um, the knowledge they need to maintain their own health or try to ensure the health of a young child. And this is a major issue, especially in some countries and some regions, for the health of adolescents. HIV AIDS uh, uh, also extremely important to adolescent health. In fact, there are two million adolescents in the world today who are HIV positive. And in some countries, up to 60% of the new infections occur among people who are 15 to 24 years of age. It wouldn't be a surprise, and this is communicable diseases, it wouldn't be a surprise in environments in which the rates of HIV are, prevalence are high to also see that tuberculosis, which uh, is a, an opportunistic infection of HIV, often goes hand in hand in those settings. And a, an important number of adolescents are actually infected with, um, with tuber tuberculosis. This is non-communicable diseases. And we've talked um, a little bit in the vignette about the fact that an increasing share of adolescents in the world are actually uh, overweight and often obese and are more and more being exposed to the risk factors that relate to these growing amount of overweight uh, and obesity. Now it's been estimated that 10 to 20 percent of all the adolescents in the world suffer from mental health conditions. Uh, and we've already seen the, uh, in the graphic on disability adjusted life years, the exceptional importance of mental health to the overall health of, um, of adolescents. Interpersonal violence we also saw, and it's um, in some regions of the world, this is more important than in others. And in Latin America and the Caribbean region, interpersonal violence is the leading cause of death of adolescent males. And finally, we know that uh, as children become a, a upper adolescents, uh, they get more and more exposed, especially in places that aren't able to manage very effectively road safety, to road traffic injuries. Now, there are a number of measures that can be taken to enable better adolescent health and several important approaches that have been recommended for how one might think about and deal with adolescent health as well. One is the importance of taking a life course perspective, and that is to think about adolescents, as we've seen in the graphics, and, and the conditions that they face, the risk factors they face, and the burden of disease as it evolves from there being younger adolescents to, uh, to upper adolescents. Second, we know that the health of everyone has to do with what we call social determinants, but this is really especially important as well for adolescents. What are the circumstances under which they are living? What is the environment in which they live? Um, what uh, is the extent to which they can avail themselves of education? Or by contrast, they're just kind of hanging around and exposed to a variety of things like tobacco, alcohol, and substance abuse. What's the extent to which they have access to jobs? that can help them uh, move ahead in ways that will allow them to be all that they can do. All of these have an impact on health. And when we're thinking about adolescence, it's very important to keep in mind 
the social determinants of health. We've talked repeatedly about auto injuries, and there are a number of measures that countries have taken to try to ensure that adolescents are better trained to get in a vehicle, that they are less distracted when they're in vehicles, that they understand how to drive under different weather conditions, uh, and that they don't get to drive with too many kids in the car or other people in the car, for example, until they pass certain milestones in age or in experience in driving. And there's evidence that these measures can work to reduce uh, road traffic injuries among adolescents. We also know that a number of um, health services aren't really set up to deal with adolescents. Adolescents have particular needs. They're a particular age group. We've talked about, and Rachel was kind enough to comment very nicely about what's so special about them. Adolescents need to be comfortable coming to health services, seeking health services, um, learning from those health service providers what they haven't learned elsewhere about appropriate health behaviors. And just like UNICEF created baby-friendly hospitals, it's really important for health systems to make themselves um, places where adolescents can feel comfortable and welcome and wish to come when they need either services or knowledge to try to maintain a healthy life. Now, it's really important as well, of course, to focus on reproductive health, especially among uh, uh, upper adolescents, but younger adolescents are often uh, also very much need to um, understand reproductive health issues and be prepared for the life to come. It's really important to try to create an environment that enables children to stay in school, thrive in school, uh, seek uh, well-paying employment after that, uh, and to avoid the risks that come with uh, uh, early and unprotected sexual relations, uh, early marriage, and early childhood. Now, having said this, it's also important to note how, um, how we must also focus our attention not just on reproductive health issues, because in some places, that's really all they talk about. I'm exaggerating slightly for effect. It's really important to see the, the adolescents uh, as people as a whole, and not just, forgive me, to focus on reproductive health issues, but also to focus more broadly on these other burdens and risks that we've talked about, including their needs to be well-nourished, their need to be uh, immunized, um, HIV, tobacco, substance abuse, mental health issues, which are so critical, and to try to encourage them to eat well, be physically active, and drive in safe and prudent ways. Now, one could speak much, much more about adolescence, but let me end by saying we've seen that adolescents are a group from 10 to 19. We also understand that their health is exceptionally important to maintaining the gains that have been made in the health of children, but also to trying to set a foundation for having healthy adults later. We know more than we did before about the leading causes of death and dallies among these groups uh, and how they vary by age uh, and, and by, uh, by sex. And we also understand, hopefully more than before, about the exceptional importance to adolescents of me mental health issues, uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia, which is really critical as we saw, HIV, and uh, along with mental health issues, self-harm. To address adolescent health issues, we have to take a life course approach. We have to keep in mind the social determinants of health. We need to focus on reproductive health, but we need to think about more than that as well. And we need to do so in settings that hopefully are friendly to adolescents and encourage them to do all they can to be healthy in an environment in which people understand who they are and try to be as helpful as possible. In the next session, we'll speak about complex humanitarian emergencies, natural disasters, and their relationship with health.